Thank you, Stuart. All right, thanks everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, so yeah, my name's Stephen Badger. Uh, I'm one of the directors and actually co-founders of the company uh, Blue Scientific Limited. Many of you may not have heard of Blue Scientific, so we'll talk about that a little bit, uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but Stuart asked me to uh, give an overview of um, my career path, which is, I suppose, a little bit different from uh, the excellent talk that you just heard a, a few moments ago. Uh, because I've spent almost my entire career in the, uh, in the world of scientific instrument sales. And uh, I'm going to tell you why I think it's uh, an interesting path to take for any uh, budding young scientists and engineers. But the story for me in corrosion started not at Manchester, uh, but at the University of Portsmouth. So I was a student there doing a four-year course uh, in applied chemistry. Uh, there was a year out at uh, ICI in, in Witness where I worked on a pilot plant. Uh, but as part of that applied chemistry course, uh, there were modules in corrosion science. And uh, there were several uh, lecturers, teachers there, of course, that were giving those courses. But I want to highlight one person in particular, uh, maybe known to, to many of you, or some of you at least, but uh, Dr. Des Barker was a, a lecturer at the University of Portsmouth. And he was one of those lecturers, one of those academics who was just such an inspirational teacher. He just had the knack of being able to convey subject matter in a really um, encouraging, uh, really motivating way. So, uh, so that sparked my, my interest. Um, and then I did a, a fourth year research project in sulfate reducing bacteria, which is why I asked uh, the, the, uh, the question earlier uh, about SRBs and bacterial uh, uh, corrosion at, uh, at Manchester. So, uh, I then thought, okay, well, this research is really interesting, corrosion is really interesting, uh, I'd like to, to somehow continue. And actually, when Stuart was teeing up the, uh, these presentations, he said, well, perhaps you want to tell people a little bit about why, why in particular you chose Manchester. Well, I suppose that uh, it's pretty clear that if you were in the field of corrosion science uh, and wanting to do research, of course, you, know, you missed the Corrosion Protection Centre uh, was very much you know, one of the places that you, you wanted to, to go to. I wanted to come to UMIST uh, and be part of that research activity. But I have to be really honest as well. Uh, it was uh, the 1990s and uh, I was pretty desperate to, uh, to come to Manchester. Um, so uh, I grew up in, in, in the Midlands in a town called uh, Kidderminster. And if ever any of you have passed through, you'd realise there's not really much to, uh, to, to, to shout about there. Uh, but my best friend at the time from Kidderminster uh, was a student in Manchester. And so periodically I'd travel up from Portsmouth to Manchester and uh, I thought, I've got to find a way to come here. What, what a city, what a vibrant city, what a great place uh, and a great place to, uh, to, to study. So um, with that, I thought, OK, I've got my, uh, my undergraduate degree from Portsmouth. Uh, I need to find a way to get to Manchester. So I actually wrote a, a letter, I think, uh, to, to Steve Turgoose uh, at the time. Steve was the um, postgraduate admissions tutor. And I said, I'd love to come and do a PhD in uh, uh, sulfate reducing bacteria. And he very kindly wrote back and said, well, we don't do that, but we've got some other things that we, you might be interested in. Why don't you come up? Uh, so uh, so I came up, met with Stuart, and, um, and he had a project um, on uh, an instrument called the scanning reference electrotechnique. And I have to say, Stuart, I think you must uh, also be uh, you know, a, a top salesperson uh, because you had managed to persuade Uniscan instruments at the time that, um, I mean, they were having these, uh, these issues with, with the measurements, right? So if you look at the, um, uh, the, the map there, that's a 2D map. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, it's... Uh, Scanning reference electrode is basically measuring uh, localized uh, electrochemical activity. So what it should be able to do is to pick out localized anodes, localized cathodes, uh, and show you where the, the localized corrosion is, is occurring. Uh, but the problem was that um, when you would scan with this instrument, uh, you would find these nice anodes, and then you'd see this huge, what appeared to be a cathode next to it. The problem is that if you scanned it the other way, the cathode appeared on the other side. So clearly an instrument artifact. And um, as I say, Stuart was a, a great salesman because he convinced Uniscan that the only way to, to solve this was firstly to give him some money for a studentship and secondly to give him an instrument, uh, which he did. Uh, and so that was the start of the, uh, of the PhD uh, uh, project. Um, 
So uh, that was uh, a case studentship, which was, which was great because there was a bit of extra cash in the back pocket for the student. Um, and what we essentially did is we tried to, to model uh, how that scanning probe response changes as it goes across your, your localised electrochemical activity. Um, and again, I have to give a great shout out to, uh, to Steve Turgus at this point because he did uh, a huge amount of modelling with us to, uh, to, to really show what was going on. And uh, well, to cut a, a three year story uh, a pretty short, uh, basically, um, if you uh, either scanned faster or if you increase the input impedance of the instrument, you, uh, you get rid of that shadowing. So, uh, so, so that was a, a good outcome for that particular instrument. Um, and uh, I, I did just put my, my certificate up there proudly displaying, uh, very proud of the UBIST heritage, but I think we were in the sort of crossover point where they couldn't quite decide if they were going to give the certificates out from the university or from UMIST. So actually, I think I got two PhDs because it's, uh, it's UMIST and the Victoria University of Manchester. That's, uh, that's what I'm claiming anyway. Uh, but that work, that PhD, really generated for me a, a passion for, for scientific uh, instrumentation. So uh, with that, the sponsors, uh, Uniscan, offered me a position. And um, I, I couldn't find a picture uh, of how it used to look, but this is how Uniscan Instruments looks today. Um, we've got uh, Andy Savage in the audience. And, uh, Andy, if you recognise this building. Uh, so, uh, so there you go. It's a sort of almost like a two up, two down. And there was uh, a grand total of seven of us uh, working in that building. And I was given um, my, uh, my, my business card with a grand title of applications and uh, development scientist. Sounds great. Um, but when you're in a company of seven people, I mean, that does, doesn't mean anything. Uh, the reality was I was doing applications. I think on my second day in the job, I was installing a system down at NPL. Um, uh, so really in at the deep end. And I had to do the service. I had to build the website, I had to make the tea, everything you'd expect. Um, and the one job that I enjoyed more than anything when I was there was the sales. So going out, talking to customers, understanding what they were trying to achieve and helping them to achieve it. So, so that really generated my passion there. Uh, with that, I uh, decided to, to move on from Uniscan um, and uh, joined uh, what was then Vico, Vico Instruments, uh, selling atomic force microscopes, surface profilers, and had various uh, positions through the years in managing distributors, uh, managing uh, sales channels, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And at some point, um, well, 2010, Vico was bought out by Brooker. And, and this is what I want to highlight because Brooker is not at all the biggest scientific instruments company in the world. Um, but Brooker alone, if you look at the numbers, it's a $2.5 billion company. Uh, they uh, hi, uh, employ 8,500 people. And so it is an absolutely fantastic career pathway for people who perhaps want something different from the academic or even the industrial uh, research route. Um, and just one example, I mean, one of the things that really uh, I enjoy about the, 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 the career of scientific sales um, is that, and, and I feel like I've got a little bit of imposter syndrome here because it was it's supposed to be a, you know, a, a, a career in corrosion. Corrosion is, is, is definitely one of the areas that we serve, but there are so many other areas that, that we serve as well. And, and for me, that diversity, uh, going out and talking to customers in, in all sorts of, 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 of environments is, is really uh, very interesting. And it turns out that, that actually the, the first AFM, uh, that uh, one of the first AFMs we sold was to the physics department here at the University of Manchester. Andre Geim had just moved over from, from Nijmegen. And uh, well, yeah, he did some stuff and was, uh, was pretty big news. Uh, so um, that was that. So on to today then. Uh, so in 2013, I then thought, okay, well, that's, uh, that's been fantastic, uh, but I'd quite like to, uh, to do my own thing. So we started uh, the company uh, Blue Scientific Limited, and uh, we're essentially a distributor uh, of scientific instruments. We do the sales, we do the marketing, the service, the applications, but we're dealing really with a, a lot of these big companies still. So, um, so some of the companies we represent include uh, Brooker, uh, Thermo Fisher, Kamika, uh, all the big names. And um, yeah, we've got about uh, 20 people or so employed uh, in the UK and uh, in the Nordics. Uh, some of the techniques that we're involved in, 
So it's uh, X-ray micro CT, we've seen some of that today, micro XRF, uh, desktop SEM, and uh, yeah, uh, XPS as well, and, and, and so on. So essentially, we've built a company which are specialists in uh, materials characterization and, and microscopy. And you would ask, okay, well, you know, why don't those companies do it themselves? Often they will, uh, but when it comes to specialist applications or certain particular regions, certain markets, um, most of the people here, uh, that's not all of them, but that was the team last year at a, at a team building exercise driving off-road vehicles. Um, most of them have a, a material science or a, or a physics background. In fact, there's even another graduate of the Corrosion Centre there, James Carr, who did his uh, PhD with, with George and, and Peter. Uh, James now actually runs our uh, demo facility. So um, I don't know if many of you know of the uh, Alderley Park, the former AstraZeneca site. Uh, but uh, AstraZeneca did one of those big strategic rethinks a few years ago and decided to move everybody down to Cambridge. And they left behind this absolutely fantastic facility, uh, which uh, companies like ourselves now rent out. We've got a demo lab there. We've got a benchtop SCM and a, and a benchtop micro CT. So if anybody's got any interesting samples they want to bring along, uh, James Carr is our application scientist uh, based there. And I'm sure he'd be happy to, uh, to, to scan some samples for you. Um, and we are continuing to hire and expand the team. Um, so finally, I saw some nice pictures downstairs, so I thought I'd share some of the ones that I managed to, 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 to grab. Uh, this is obviously some uh, deep scientific debate going on in D9 over here uh, with John Sykes and, uh, and Ismail Syed. And um, yeah, there was a, a real dream team football uh, team back in, uh, back in the late 90s, as you can see by that uh, fine looking bunch of, uh, of individuals. And I think um, there's probably a couple of familiar faces in here. I'm not sure if uh, there's, there's many from the audience, but uh, Nick Laycock is there, giving the camera a death stare. Yeah, it turns out he was a much better corrosion scientist than he ever was a centre half. And um, uh, I think uh, even uh, Professor Joe is, uh, is uh, lurking there somewhere in one of these photos. So there he is, there he is. So, um, so yeah, but anyway, um, great times, absolutely fantastic uh, springboard for me. Uh, to build the, uh, what, what's turned out to be a, a really fulfilling career uh, in uh, the commercial world of scientific instrument sales. So, yeah, thank you to everybody at the centre, and thank you in particular to Stuart for, uh, well, the opportunity today, but also, uh, yeah, for all of that support um, back in the, uh, the late 90s. So, thank you very much, Stuart.